It's party time, people. And I have my PPCs. I have a little bit of flutters and a little bit of nerves. As someone who has been judged in a professional setting for all kinds of recipes, you know, you just don't take it personally. But to be judged in this setting, it's very real. Hey guys, it's Carla. I am here again in my kitchen for another episode of That Sounds So Good. Today I'm going to be making the legendary pink party cookies. The pink party cookies are legendary because they were handed down by Grandma Margaret, who is my husband's maternal grandmother and was famous for all of her baked goods, but especially her holiday cookies. And within the category of holiday cookies, the Pink Party Cookies reign supreme. They're an elusive little cookie. They're delicious, they're very special, and I had to go through very many rounds of family instructionals, and I'm pretty sure even though this recipe works, they're never gonna be as good as hers, but we're gonna give it a try, and you can make them too. The Pink Party Cookies are in the dessert chapter of That Sounds So Good, appropriately, and all of the recipes in the dessert chapter, I'm gonna give you gram weights and also cups and teaspoon volume measurements. This is gonna be 270 grams of all-purpose flour. This is a super shortbread short cookie, so there's no eggs at all. And I also need 60 grams of powdered sugar, AKA confectioner's sugar. So these things, I'm gonna add two grams of kosher salt, which is half a teaspoon, and just whisk this stuff together. Great. All right, so to start the cookie, I'm going to cream together butter and shortening. There's an amount of unsalted butter in the cookie dough and there's another amount of butter that goes into the filling. This is a quarter cup of vegetable shortening. This is the butter for the filling. Um, it needs to be melted later, so I'm just gonna set it aside now. And I'm just gonna beat these until combined. I just wanna make sure that this mixture is smooth, that there's no little beads of fat left in it, and it's nice and homogenized. Mmm, butter. Okay, I'm gonna scrape down the sides and add one teaspoon of um, pure vanilla extract. Okay, I'm gonna just give it one more check to make sure there's nothing in the bottom of the bowl that needs to be mixed in with everybody else. Dry ingredients. It's important that this mixture has been mixed together and that you don't mix it for very long once it's going in with the butter. Um, you want a really short, really crumbly, no gluten development situation. I'm sure Grandma Margaret did not have a stand mixer when she first made these cookies. And you could definitely do this one by hand. It's just such a simple mixture. If you have a wooden spoon and a bowl, you can absolutely make this. Okay, that looks great. It's still a little bit crumbly. When I'm squeezing it, it's totally homogenous and combined. Okay, that's the dough. Rolling and flattening and baking the dough. This is a sandwich cookie. So it is kind of important that the top of the sandwich and the bottom of the sandwich are the same size because it's like a cookie hamburger bun. 10 grams, one and a half teaspoons. If you don't have a scale and you do a few where you measure them, a teaspoon and a half, then you can kind of eyeball it from there. If the dough gets too warm at any time while you're rolling them, just pop the bowl of dough into your fridge for 10 minutes and then go again. Some people have hot hands, it's a fact. Now that we have our cookie balls, it's time to do the crosshatch pattern. This is a flattening and also a making of a pattern like the top of a peanut butter cookie. If you just push straight down with the fork, what will happen is you'll pull the fork up and the cookie will be embedded in the bottom of the tines. So a little bit of flour on the fork and then it's a rocking motion. So you're going from one side to the other and then 
the cookie will stay flat and the fork will release. Every time I do this, I debate, do I wanna go straight tic-tac-toe or would it be acceptable to do a diamond pattern? <laughs> I'm gonna ask. I've rolled, I've flattened, I've cross hatched to the best of my abilities. And now the cookies are going into a 350 degree oven until they are just set and take on no color. A tiny bit of golden at the edge, but these, no, that's a no, that's a hard no. The cookies today took 10 to 11 minutes. The book says about eight, but it's all about color and touch. But I'm pretty proud. I gotta say, I feel like I really nailed these. They have the firmness so that when you press down on the top, they're not hard, but they're not gonna fall down under the press of your finger. And then looking at the edge, they're very blonde. So while those cool down, I'm gonna move into the filling which I'm gonna start again by weighing out the powdered sugar. Two cups of sugar. That's 240 grams. This is the same powdered sugar. Okay, perfect. I've got six tablespoons of melted butter, which is also just about room temperature. It's sort of like a blonde pink Oreo. <laughs> just getting the butter all smashed in. Okay, funny story. The other day I was making these, you'll see them later, and the only kind of maraschino cherry I had was this. Um, the color, obviously, of the liquid is completely different, but I went ahead and I was like, cherry juice is cherry juice, and I made them with those, and the right color was not achieved. Today we have what you want, which is cherry man. <laughs> or any kind of like grenadine colored cherry juice, juice. This looks like a lovely pink. It is the amount that I called for in the recipe. It is too tight though. You couldn't frost with this. And also sometimes when it's too tight, the butter is separating, it's gonna look grainy and greasy. So you can't add more cherry juice because then the color would be wrong. So the way that you adjust the cookie Filling at this point is with one or two tablespoons of heavy cream, and it's kind of magical, like once you add it and stir it in, that graininess just smooths out. And the goal here is to get to a consistency that is kind of thick enough to hold its shape, like in that sandwich cookie. And they will set, the frosting will set as it sits. So if while you're filling the cookies, it starts to tighten up, just add a little splash of cream. All right, that looks, that looks good. Let's make some cookie sandwiches. I think this makes a little more frosting than you need, which is okay, you might have left over. And then putting the frosting, I don't know what I'm doing, but the way that I do it is I put the frosting in the middle and then I kind of like twist the top one on. So it makes the nice like hamburger bulge on the side. So if you spread it all the way to the edges before you put the top cookie bun on, it would bulge out the sides. If you're doing a cookie swap or going to a cookie swap, you will win the cookie swap with this cookie. No one has ever seen a PPC. And if someone has seen a PPC and knows and sees them and says, is that a pink party cookie? Then that person knows all of my in-laws. Anyway, they're adorable and I love them. I think Gia would really like these. I should have made these for Gia's birthday party. Yeah, it doesn't have to be for the holidays. It could be for any occasion. A flamingo party, they would be great. A Miss Piggy themed party, totally. A unicorn type of party, also good. Valentine's Day, the worst holiday on the planet, sure. Pink cookie. I'm sweating a little bit because my PPCs today are going to be assessed by my husband's family's oldest, closest friend, Roddy. And he's a very kind and sweet person, so I'm sure he'll be sweet to me, but he's also made the PPCs and he's eaten many PPCs. So one of the questions I have is like, 
a couple of these cracked at the edges. Some of them pressed down and they were perfectly round like that guy is perfect. And I would like to know if that has been seen before or if that is a failure. Anytime you have a PPC, it's a party. It's party time, people. I'd like to welcome my guests now to the cookie party and let's just see what they have to say. Ding dong! Hi. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the party. Mm. How are you? I'm great, how are you? Good. Hi. How's it going? Good, how are you? <laughs> How's your party? So, okay, first glance, what do you think? These have not set totally. Okay. These ones I made yesterday, they've been chilled. Okay. And they're wrong because I think you can see right away that something's wrong with that filling. Tone of it? The color, yeah. color of it? Uh -oh. Too hunky. Yeah. Too hunky. <laughs> it's a, yeah. It's a I mean, it's definitely hunky. different than this. Yes. This color looks beautiful. Yes. Okay, good. I think I agree. Some of the cookies did this thing where they like, when I pressed them down, oh, there was yeah. a little crack. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it's a homemade cookie and any right. sort of imperfection is only good. good. Point. So glad good, you said only that. Great. Good That's point. really nice. Good point. Okay, let's try a cookie. Mm. So good. Takes me home. The really? frosting mix the, the buttery, buttery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what mm. it taste does though, this takes me right mm -hmm. to like a oh. holiday. How would Margaret feel about everybody having her recipe? If she wasn't already dead, it would kill her. <laughs> <laughs> dead, of, yeah. uh, dead of anger? Of happiness. Oh, good. Yeah. I thought she was going to drop dead She'd be from. <laughs> okay. Good dead, not bad dead. Mm -hmm. Good dead. We love good dead. Thanks for coming to the party. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having us. Want another cookie? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Definitely. Thank you. Mm. Mm. 10 out of 10. Would make again. Would make again. <laughs> Way to go, Margaret. She Way did a good go. job.